So here we've got some <laughs> some of the children busy climbing the mango tree. <laughs> I just want to get those mangoes. Any ripe ones up there, Andrew? You got two already, eh? Wow. Hey, Prissy, don't fall down now. No good you're putting down. Boy, catch him, Rabbi Pasta. No, 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 catch him, no, but I'll come. Oh. Are they yummy? The students were very busy last week. And it's now getting up to a point where it's just about the height that we want it to be. So this front corner, that's the right height, and tomorrow we've got another two truckloads to come on top of this pad, and then the students will level, level all of that off. And so we have had it that the water gets to the top of this sand pad, just underneath it. Certainly in my time, it's been that high. But because the house is going to be 2.1 metres up again from that, we figure that this will be all right. So the students have done a really good job compacting it in layers. The truck drives on here and hardly leaves an indent. And then once it's all up, then we'll get some good topsoil and make these sides nice and even and a gradual decline to the grass here and it all should come up looking really nice and so there's the bunkhouse in the background and then as I go around that's where our chooks are at the moment the poultry they'll eventually be shifted so will this firewood that the students use so this is really quite a prime location so this is the other side, that too is nearly up to the right level, still needs a fair bit of compacting to compaction, but the uh, students will be busy with that soon. So here we've got Chris, he's got a bar of soap in his hand there, but also, what's that green stuff Chris? It's uh, what we call it, uh, grass. Bit of grass, eh? Yeah. But I'm it's a bit of an, like, like um, it's an abrasive? Yeah. All right. It's abrasive. Yeah, and so you lather it up a little bit. Yep. And then you use that to clean your pans. Then you go for Okay. Look at that, eh? Can you see? Yeah. It's grabbing all the... <laughs> that's all right, that's good. That's an old flower stuffs. Because I know we... Uh, we, Liz and myself used some of that on a, on black pans and it cleaned it up real quickly. Yeah. It scraped all the soot off very, very quickly. It was good stuff. Just a bit of grass folded up. There you go. Well done. Looking nice and clean. Oh, thanks for sharing that, Chris. Thanks. All right then. So here's Matthias getting his rice ready. One cup of rice. <laughs> Oh, Vili as well, eh? Yeah. All right. <laughs> You've got it in a wine cup. <laughs> Into the pan it goes. Bit of water. This is where the fire will be lit. Vili, are you lighting the fire or Matthias is going to light the fire? I'll try this time. You'll try this time? Oh, we're we getting there. Very sensitive thing. Yeah. The plastic is dripping in there, but there's the oils in the plastic. It's helping this fire come alight. Yeah. Look at that. It's even making all the right noises now. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, this fire is getting hotter, and the pan of rice is on. One cup of rice, two of water, and both of these gentlemen are keenly awaiting their meal to be ready. So what are you going to have with the rice, Matthias? Or Billy? What are you going to add with it? Possibly tin fish. Some tin fish? Yeah. Noodles. Right. Yep. Possibly. And some what, sorry? Noodles. Some noodles? Maybe. Maybe. 
So we really got the smoke happening here. So it will be smoked rice. Not quite. <laughs> It'll be good rice. It'll though. be good rice. Absolutely. I've tasted it before. You guys do a great job in getting it ready. Mm -hmm. I reckon it's the fire though. It's the fire for sure. Yeah. Gives a really good flavour to everything. Mm. But once that fire gets a bit hotter, the smoke will disappear as well. So here we've got James with his son Cornelius, but then their other son, who is Nathan Mark. So this is young Nathan Mark. How old is Nathan, James? Uh, almost two months. Almost two months, yes, yeah. yeah. So you're doing the fatherly duties at the moment? Yeah. yeah giving Yerim a little bit of time free? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you're going for a bit of a walk around the property? Yeah. Nice, eh? Enjoy the shade. It's a beautiful time of the afternoon, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So these are all the student gardens. Is this your garden up ahead here? No, your garden's out there, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, your garden's the one that's looking really good. Why does that not surprise me? <laughs> <laughs> so here we are right at the back of the block and the river is down a fair bit. These are some of the clothes that our neighbours hang on the fence to dry. Towels and the like. Yeah, I think in a previous video I said that this river can really get up high. In fact, we've had it, but it's come up. I'll go down to the level that the water's come up to. So there's the base of this um, pole, and it's come up about 12 inches from the base so it's a lot of water as you can imagine and the gardens on the other side are completely destroyed it's... in the background there you can see two really big tanks so we take water out of the river run it through a filter a sand filter and it goes into those tanks and then both of our ablution blocks so there's an ablution block here and there's an ablution block at the under, other end of the oval We've got uh, two tanks way up on a stand. We make sure that they're always full. And so when we have a power outage, then these showers still work because the water is gravity fed. And we've calculated that there's enough water in these tanks to last two days of showering and, and toilet activity. Now we do have a generator, but that generator does not power the pump from the river and so those tanks there can become empty which means that we've always got these two tanks here in reserve so it's a really good system that Richard's devised and it works wonderfully well so these toilets here we've got the females on the right hand side and the male toilets on the left hand side and we're getting towards the end of another day Let's get these beautiful sunsets around here. It's a really nice time of the afternoon. So here we've got William, and William has been devouring English books out of the library, but there's no tomorrow. So well done, William. So this book here, what's this book called? The Baron of Salgas, a true Huguenot story by Sabine Melplach. Well done, it's nice. You enjoying it? Yes. Yes, and I, I noticed, I think you're just about reading two or three books a day, close to. <laughs> yeah. Well, good for you. Well done. So your English must be improving a lot. Do you yeah. find that? I think so. <laughs> yeah, and you're, you're understanding what you're reading, okay? Yes. Yeah. That's no, really appreciated. Yeah. I know Liz is really happy too because you're, you're putting them back in the box and then she puts them on the shelf. So keep that up. That's good. Well done. So here's Christine, she's just gone to the garden. What have you picked what have you picked this time, Christine? I picked kangaroo and mushroom. Mushroom? Oh, yeah. so some wild mushroom. Look at that. Wow, that's something nice to add to your meal. Hey? Eh? Yes. What a bonus. That's excellent. Is there a fair bit there? Yeah. Oh good. Good. Nice work. Alright, Christine. Enjoy your enjoy your meal. Thank you.
So here they are. The, tramp, the, the trampoline is a gathering point. How far do you have to count to? 20? 20. 20. Oh, so now you have to find them? Yeah. Oh, the no, race is on. No, we have to find them. No, we have to find them. Oh. No, no, we have to find them. Oh, my God. 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 Hey, Walima. The rain is coming. Can you hear it? for this. Glorious, glorious, glorious. So here we have Clyde he's one of our students and he's just picked a whole heap of kungo you can see that here and so Clyde can you tell the people what it is that you're doing right now uh, this is a, a kango that I'm picking it to uh, sell and buy some food for myself so this is holiday so uh, I decided to pick kango and sell and earn some money for myself. Well, how yes. much do you sell each bundle uh, for? Each bundle we sell for uh, one kina. One kina. One, one kina each. Okay, and so you've got all of this kango here that you've picked. How many um, how many hands or how many bundles do you think you'll get uh, out of that? I hope I'll make ten bundles out of this heap. Okay, ten bundles. So you hope to get ten kina? Ten kina. Wonderful. And how long does it take you to get those 10 bundles ready? Uh, it uh, took me about uh, one hour. One hour to yes, pick? One hour to pick. And now, and now half an hour to get them into, into bundles, do you think? Or will it take uh, a bit longer? Maybe long? uh, 20 minutes. 20 minutes, yeah. eh? All right, that's good. You don't mind doing it? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we often see you in the garden working very hard. Liz always knows that Clyde's in the garden because <laughs> she sees the red shirt <laughs> and she goes, oh, Clyde's in the garden again. That's really neat. That's nice to be productive like that, Clyde. And you're in a nice spot here in amongst the uh, yes. banana trees, nice yeah. and shady. <laughs> yeah, that's good. And then you'll, uh, you'll grab a wheelbarrow and take them up yes. to the road at the top there. Yes. Yeah. And, and do you normally sell all of them? Yes. Yeah? Sometimes. Sometimes we sell all of it, but sometimes they just buy some and we take uh, only few back. Oh, okay. And then you give that to the students to yeah. mix in with their we food? Give them to the students, or otherwise we'll just share with uh, people outside there. Oh, that's really nice, Clyde. Yeah. You share with those people. Yeah. Excellent. So we're in the garden patch here. And you'll notice there's this, this waterway up here and it uh, keeps going around that way and you'll see Clyde in the distance there. This water feeds our Kungo patch and it's actually the water from the piggery. So there's lots of nutrients in there as well. 
and so our Kungo patch does very well as a result. And the Kungo is much desired by a lot of the inhabitants around 14 mile. So here's the Kungo patch that I was referring to earlier. It's a nice big patch of this green leafy plant and the students pick it and as I said they add it to their rice. Lots of good protein. So here in the banana patch we've got a few bananas. These are the very small ones. They've got to get a bit fatter yet. They're very sweet. It's a rope of bananas. We call it a rope and there's a number of hands on that rope of bananas there. It looks like someone actually has chopped the very bottom portion off. But we've got a few bananas that are starting to get ready here. And once the bananas get harvested, the tree comes down and then there's new growth that shoots up from the stem here. I'll just show you another rope of bananas that's being well looked after. So that rope has been wrapped up in old banana leaves and they do that so that the birds and the rats stay off it and it can ripen up just nicely. We thought we were pretty clever by getting black plastic bags but it uh, produced a very very hot environment and the bananas ripened way too quickly and it didn't turn out as well as we would have hoped. Well, there's a few more, there's another big bundle of bananas that you can see all wrapped up they're getting getting close to being taken off the tree <laughs> 